my friends might have this question and you guys, our friends on the internet, might have this question. So the question is, what now? So you gotta breathe. Good, Good morning. morning! This morning I put on my Duke shirt and it brought up a question that I thought my friends and family, I mean my friends, my family knows the answer, but my friends might have this question and you guys, our friends on the internet, might have this question. So the question is, what now? Yeah, we have relocated to North Carolina. As you know, Mary was evaluated by Duke in May for liver and lung transplant and it was a preemptive evaluation of uh, kind of figuring out some details in terms of figuring out is her liver an issue that would need a transplant and we right. found out that the answer is yes and there's only a few centers that do that and Duke's one of the top centers for that which highly influenced us making the move. <coughs> down here right so so then I guess my my question here is where are we at now with the whole transplant conversation in relation to I'm on this new medication that is changing our life and and where does that leave us with transplant so this is this is kind of just like us processing because really there are no uh, like direct answers for that question because in life we don't have all the answers to like what's gonna happen next, what's the timing, like how quickly is my health gonna decline, am I gonna be stable, am I gonna get better, all of those questions. Of course we don't know the answers but here's our best guess. The transplant conversation is, on one hand, it's on hold, and on the other hand, we're fully still connected with the transplant teams. So when we were here in May, the transplant teams basically said, yes, we will accept you as our patient and as a lung and liver transplant patient here at Duke for when the time comes that you will need a transplant. And so we are a patient within both transplant uh, clinics. That being said, they've already scheduled me for all my next transplant appointments, which are coming up in um, like two months or a month and a half. And th that includes some further testing, like an upper endoscopy to check on some of the liver stuff, et cetera, et cetera. So we're still fully connected with those teams, but I'm so excited to see them in a month and a half because they already know that I'm on this medication and the lung transplant doctor has already called and like asked how it's, how's it going and that sort of thing. They've already talked to my team in Boston who put me on this medication. Everybody's in the loop, but I'm excited for them to see it. I'm excited for them to see the increase in my pulmonary function test. Our washing machine is singing. It's distracting me. Um, I'm excited for them to see me and I'm excited to hear... <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's done singing. I'm excited to hear their take on it. Of course, this is all brand new to have a patient with, uh, what's the word for like extensive lung disease? What is it? Like severe lung disease, whatever. It's a new thing for somebody with progressed, progressed lung disease to then get better. It's all new territory and so on one hand the transplant conversation is we're able to take a breather, literally. Totally. We're, we're so grateful and so just to catch you up to speed if you haven't been watching our videos, Mary started uh, what is now called Trikafta. Uh, it was approved by the FDA last week but Mary started it about 14 weeks ago. It sounds and right. she started it under kind of compassionate use or extended or expanded, expanded access as they called it and she has seen just a tremendous boost in her health in lung function in quality of life as you if you watch our videos in the last 14 weeks you just see 
Mary coughs a whole lot less than she used to. And so we're so grateful for this stability. We, we made this move to North Carolina uh, with the hope that this would happen. I mean, this, this kind of blew our hopes out of the water for what <laughs> this medication might do. But we made this move thinking, hopefully transplant is years down the road. Right. And with this medication, it's looking like that may be the case. And uh, Duke has said that they follow people for years before they get to transplant. Right. And uh, so we're just really grateful that it, like Mary said, it can be on hold, but it's a continued conversation because right. we don't know what the future holds. We don't, there's so many unknowns and we, we hope that this uh, medication continues to stabilize Mary's health for years. But we're also cognizant of this is very new. Right. Um, there's a lot of unknowns, how it's going to affect her liver long term, how it will affect the lungs long, like will it, right. how much will it slow down the progression and all of that. We just don't know. Yeah, and <clears throat> you know, it was interesting because in May when we were here for all of those appointments and we were meeting with these doctors, you know, we kept saying our hope is that the triple combo can become available. And they all echoed the same thing. That's our hope too. And that hopefully we'll be able to get you on that medication and it'll do its work. And it was all kind of this future idea and hope. And now it's reality. But on the other hand, like Peter said, we are aware that there are no guarantees. I'm on this medication, it's doing amazing things, but we, we're aware that at any moment things can change. And catching that cold a few weeks ago was a prime example of things can change in just a moment's notice. And thankfully, with that cold, I'm about a month out of having that or catching that cold, and I'm back to pretty much what I was before the cold. But I'm aware that that isn't necessarily always going to be the the outcome and it could have had a lasting impact or or for whatever reason if I have to come off of this medication what they've told me is as quickly as you saw an improvement with this medication that's as quickly as you'll see the decline most likely because what it's doing is it's fixing that protein in the cells and when you unfix it it's going to be just like before and I've heard that from other patients who have who were on it for the trial or for whatever reason they're not on it anymore. And they said, it's true, you go back to baseline within days. And so we know that and we're aware of that. I know that we told you guys like before the medication came out, we were cautiously optimistic and now we're just optimistic. And that's how we feel about our future. It's like we are optimistic because we see the benefits and we're experiencing the benefits right now, but we also are cautious in that we know, we're aware that things can change. And so, for now, for where we are in this moment and in this month, we're excited and thankful to go show the transplant teams yeah. all of the amazing things that have happened in the last 14 weeks. And I know that they're gonna be excited, but also knowing that staying in contact with them is an important part of my future healthcare. Um, speaking of future healthcare, so we're down here in Mass, uh, not Massachusetts, North Carolina, and I will be followed by the transplant clinics, liver and lung transplant clinics, and then the cystic fibrosis clinic, which is a completely different clinic. Yeah, clinic, clinic yeah. yeah. And then I'll have my specialties like immunology and ENT for my sinuses, GI, uh, all the things. We're in the midst of transferring all of that. My Boston team has been in contact with the Duke team and um, it's quite a process, but we're gonna get there and this is where we're at. Yeah, so the month ahead is a big month of transition of making some of those connections with new teams, new doctors, and uh, taking the next steps. Like Mary said, uh, it's figuring out each detail, each doctor, each care team. And so we 
long answer to that question of how does Trikafta basically affect the transplant conversation is that we continue to have the conversation in a much more casual way <laughs> and yeah. uh, we're grateful. Yeah, and it's a continual um, discovery for the transplant teams of looking at different tests and really seeing for the future how how will my body do as we lead up to transplant and then during transplant and that sort of thing. And part of that is like the endoscopy that they want to do. They want to see the extent of what the liver disease has done to my varices and my esophagus and these sorts of things. So they're kind of continually observing and studying my body so that when the time comes, they will be as prepared as they possibly can be. Um, but I think what it will look like from here on out and as my health is stable, I think it's about every six months that I'll be seen at the transplant clinic. And I'm sure that that will, um, will with time figure out what works best for them, what works best for us and how to best follow my body as whatever happens in the next months and years to come. Well, he just put his paw on my hand. <laughs> well guys, Sorry. I hope that answers some questions. And if you have other specific questions about the transplant process, if you've just clicked on this video and you're unaware, I have cystic fibrosis. It's a genetic lung disease that I was born with. And as a CF patient like progresses, sometimes it comes to a point where you need a transplant. So that's why we were talking about transplant. It's a very last resort option. And so that's why we're always talking about pushing it as far out as we can. Um, so we're just gonna keep living and making the most of what today looks like. And as always, we'll see you tomorrow. Good, Good night. night. Good night, Allie boy. Oh. <laughs>